1978, Jim Davis debuted a comic strip about a big fat cat smoking his owner's pipe. And now, 40 years later, he's everywhere. Clothes, phones, movies, shows, whatever the fuck that is. <laughs> My favorite contribution to this Garf madness would have to be that of a certain restaurant that was open for two years, sold terrible food, and was owned by a fucking psychopath. Yes, today I'm gonna educate you all on the world's first enter-gaging restaurant. Garfield Eats. Yippee. All right, so it's 2018. Avengers Infinity War is like a whole thing. But most importantly, 27-year-old entrepreneur Nathan Masri is looking to make his mark on the earth. Now, he'd previously dipped his toes in the world of fast food franchises in Dubai. But this time, Nathan was for real, for real. So naturally, given his childhood attachment to Garfield and the fucking strange enigma that it is on the internet, the self-proclaimed world-renowned branding specialist has now decided to become the self-proclaimed world's youngest Garfield licensee. By the way, you're gonna hear a lot of self-proclaimed going forward. That's just, a, he, he does that a lot. <laughs> After a six month back and forth with Papa Davis, Nathan has finally acquired the license to carry. A license to carry the Garfield brand, that is. <laughs> no, but really, he's got the Garfield brand, and with the help of an investor, is able to open the first Garfield East location uh, in Dubai. This is mainly just a prototype for the full incarnation of Garfield East, which would eventually make its way to the bustling city of Toronto, Canada in 2019. <laughs> Home of Drizzy, Glizzy, and a lot of identity crisis, but we don't need to get into that. On the 21st of June, the Garfield East in Toronto opened its doors to the public, branding its signature slogan, Love me, feed me, never leave me which is the creepiest fucking slogan I've ever heard in my life. Side note, I just quickly want to bring up this exchange I had with the Garfield Eats Twitter account because I <laughs> I don't know what other opportunity I'll get to share this. I was just kind of shit posting in their DMs for a while with like no response. But after sending a message professing my love to them, I finally got a response in the form of this fucking voice message. Love me, feed me, don't leave me. <laughs> love you too, Nick. <laughs> Am I gonna die? <laughs> Anyways, inside the restaurant itself, everything was decked out in Garfield branding. And on the app, which Nathan described as a community hub where users could share nostalgia, <laughs> you could also share these reward points, also known as paws, which could then be used to unlock coupons, <laughs> which as you can assume are just coupons with Garfield flavoring. Now this rancid orange theming also covers the food with items such as the Garfield Garita, which is supposed to be a margarita pizza in the shape of Garfield's head. It was advertised to look like this, but most of the time it looks like this. But since it generally looked like this, the customers were not happy. So when they say farm to plate, I'm pretty sure they just mean that some of their ingredients may have been grown on a farm. Seems like they're using it to justify high prices, which I can only assume are necessary to cover the costs of a Garfield license. Anyway, the food is bad and the app is confusing. This was all a very bad idea. One star. Jesus Christ. <laughs> Soggy pizza, slow service, sides offered were fries or salad, and they were out of both. No washrooms, very limited seats. One star. Gar Garfield pissed in my garbagino. One star. Okay, I think you get it. Now, not all of the reviews were negative, but it's impossible to tell which ones are just shit posts and like actually positive reviews. But it's pretty safe to assume that most of them are just shit posts. This is my personal mecca. I made a pilgrimage here and wept at the profound philosophical truth I saw on the walls. But was the profound philosophical truth truly on the walls? No. It was within me the whole time. <laughs> Think Paul Simon's Graceland, but Garfield. You, you see what I mean? What is this shit? And Nathan had a habit of responding to these reviews and then mass reporting them, deeming them irrelevant or hateful. But he would also treat actual genuine reviews in the same way, claiming they were written with bad intent when that really wasn't the case most of the time. And when people called him out for it, he had this to say in a Medium article written by uh, himself. Harmful reviewers are bullies. They can't let it go. Forgive, forget, or just shut up if they have nothing nice to say at all. I would respect the reviewer who says your sauce requires more work or your pizza crust tastes better when thick, or balancing a review between a positive and a negative, which gives the review weight, credibility, and respect. We do not flag those. Words may hurt, and of course, as we now know, they may also cause suicides among bullied teenagers. What the fuck are you talking about? We've lost the plot, Nathan. Holy shit. But as much as Nathan hated these reviews with a burning passion, they just kept on coming. And soon enough, the Garfield Eats Google review page was flooded with one-star reviews. But unfortunately, at the dawn of a new decade, Nathan still had his biggest obstacle coming up. Landlords. And a whole global pandemic, but mostly landlords. 
And throughout 2020 and early COVID lockdowns, it was made pretty clear that there were some disagreements going on between Garfield Eats and its landlord. And after a few ups and downs and unhinged press releases, it seems like Garfield Eats might make it after all, albeit through online delivery only. But unfortunately, on November 11th of 2020, it was announced that Garfield Eats would officially be closing its doors. Nathan had apparently had enough of the landlord's shenanigans throughout the pandemic and called it quits for the Garfield Eats storefront. We have always paid the rent and ready to disclose bank statement and proof of transfers made to the landlord since the lockdown in March 2020. But he wanted more, more, and more. He is simply greedy after we updated his entire filthy building. The final nail in the coffin came later on when Viacom terminated Nathan's license to the Garfield IP, meaning he could no longer associate with the Orange Cat in any way. And this devastated Nathan. The self-proclaimed youngest Garfield licensee had now had his pride and joy stripped from his paws. Now this whole saga happened nearly four years ago at this point. Nathan has moved on to other ventures, the Garfield Eats Twitter account is still very active and very unhinged, and 995 Bloor Street West now sits home to another boring Garfless pizza joint. Nathan seems to look back on this whole charade with both bitterness and fondness as well as using it as a bit of a learning lesson for himself. In a recent interview, he says, I had to grieve. I mean, I warmed for a while. That's what they taught me in branding and marketing courses. Live the brand, feed the brand, be the brand. And what I did is I took it too far and I lost myself. I forgot who Nathan Masri was. And I think that's a nice thing for him to take away from this all. To focus more on oneself rather than getting swept up in the brand. And as somewhat sad as it is to say, I don't think we'll see him getting involved in any other weird licensed food products anytime soon. You motherfucker.